Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to be looking at AV Linux. Is this good for production? Of course we have Ubuntu Studio, we have Linux where we can pretty much install all these things on top of anyway. Um, is AV Linux a good contender? So uh, before we dive into that, have a look at the links in the description down below. I do have some books on Audible and if you follow my links and create an account, I do get a bounty credit uh, which is effectively like an affiliate link. So if you are thinking about using Audible or interested in any of my three books. Uh, if you're thinking about using Audible, use my link in the description down below to sign up. Or if you already have Audible, consider picking up one of my books with your free credits. So with that being said, let's go ahead and have a look at AV Linux. So this is a build based on Debian and it is designed for doing AV work. So audio video work. So think of it kind of like an Ubuntu studio, only it doesn't have the entire spectrum of everything like studio has where you can say, I want to do full desktop publishing. I want to do music. I want to do video. I want to do graphics. So Ubuntu studio has a little bit more. This one focuses specifically on uh, specifically on uh, on audio video stuff and uh, we will have a look at it and uh, first and foremost if you are looking into getting this you are going to want to go over to the uh, reader's manual and read through it it has a very odd installation procedure and uh, your installation procedure uh, will require to make everything and then you actually install it by restoring the live CD onto the partitions that you made. It is a little unusual, uh, just a warning for that. And so it is definitely not advised if you are a beginning Linux user, uh, you want to, uh, you will probably want to uh, uh, steer clear from this one until you get some little bit more experience. Uh, but with that being said, what we are going to do is we are going to boot this guy up into a virtual machine and we will have a look at what this guy looks like. Um, now, as we are getting ready to boot this guy up, uh, let me start by saying that that overall, um, just the footnotes of this, I am not overly impressed with the distribution. One of the biggest challenges is that there is a login you have to use to get into the system, which is actually different from the login you need to use to install the system. You had to dig through the installation manual to find the login that you needed to use in order to install the system. And that to me was just totally weird. So with that, let's go ahead and log into AV Linux. And uh, we will log into here. It will give us a nice full screen. We are, uh, like I said, we are Debian based on XFCE, uh, Debian based with the XFCE desktop environment. It does look pretty nice. Uh, neat little round logo sets. Um, I have installed it. And uh, the only other thing I did is I expanded my menu because it was just a little too small to read everything that was in there. So this is what we get on installation. We are officially installed here. And uh, it is basically Debian with a lot of different tools and packages. So we do have the assistant. Uh, this guy here is uh, one of the few things that is kind of an extra, uh, extra add-on. Uh, we have apt cleanup, um, distribution upgrade, which is cool. It does have some nice systems in here. So in theory, you should just be able to roll to your most recent versions. And this is a brand new version. That is going to come into play in a few moments. All right, so the download is rather large. I think it's like 3.5 gigabytes or something like that. And it has a lot of things that it has. It has Firefox. It also has Google Chrome. It has a lot of applications, um, which we would kind of expect being an AV based distribution. So if we have a look at all of the applications under our accessories, uh, we do have a wide variety of things. Actually, before I get too far into this, um, do we have, I just want to see if we have a system monitor in here. Uh, okay, well, Spotify's on there. All right. Which makes sense for an AV thing. You might want Spotify. Uh, let's see if HTOP is installed. Nope. Just want to get an idea what the. Um... Oh, that's right. I'm not in a pseudo group. We're not going to bother. Um, I didn't put myself in a pseudo group. 
Um, so uh, we're not going to see how many system resources it's taking. Um, it's going to be fairly light. It's Debian based on XFCE, so it's going to be fairly light. Uh, but as far as our applications, we do have things like um, USB writers, uh, just a lot of really useful tools for different things, screenshots, uh, sensor viewers. I, mean, I have no idea what half this stuff does. Um, no, there's a task manager. There we are. Uh, so we're using 7% of my memory. I have 6 gigs of RAM, so do the math. All right. So under our development, we have our icon browser, graphics, they give us Blender, which is an interesting one to, to have out of the box. Uh, Blender is, of course, uh, 3D rendering animations. Uh, basically, it's uh, 3ds Max um, or um, uh, what's the other one? Um, is Substance Painter one of these two? I forget. Uh, we have GIMP, uh, Image Magic, Inkscape and um, shot well and an image viewer. As far as internet, they give us Google Chrome and Firefox. We have transmission and IRC chat. Now let's go back to multimedia. Uh, we don't have any full office package uh, out of the box. We have a desktop calendar, dictionary, basic stuff that comes with XFCE. And then we do have an additional drivers tool. That's actually kind of neat. Um, so, Let's have a look at this guy, other software, Debian software. So here is actually uh, some tools for other drivers. That's actually uh, an interesting thing. And then we have Bleachbit, uh, Bleachbit as root. We do have uh, a boot up managers. We have a... Um, uh, we have another uh, system back for a complete backup and restore. This is actually what you use to install the system. Um, hey, there's our task manager again. Apparently it's in there. I just didn't see it the first time. And then just a variety of other things. Now, as far as multimedia is concerned, let's go back to this. So we have a ton of tools. Now, I do some audio production, but not a lot. I do audio production in the realm of audiobooks. Um, hence, my audiobooks are on Audible. Um, and I produce my audiobooks completely on Linux. I use those on my Linux Mint 18.3. And there's a little couple caveats in that that we're going to get into in a moment. Um, and so here we just have a lot of tools that um, will be very useful for different things that you need to do. We have Audacity. Uh, we do have Ordor on here. Um, out of the box, which is uh, sometimes can be difficult to get installed, but this actually does seem to be working. Um, it does not have LMMS, which most people I know that do audio production on Linux do prefer LMMS, um, but uh, it doesn't have that, but it does have a lot of other system tools. We have disk production, so a variety of different CD burners um, and uh, audio tagging. Here's hardware configuration, dealing with your AV equipment and then Clementine, MPV, and then Spotify, and then we have our, under our video production, um, a variety of different video editors. This is one of these things where it's kind of like studio. There's so many options. It's like, do you really need every one of these, or do you just kind of pick the one that you use? Uh, it just raises a question. But we're going to have a look at just a couple of things out of the box. First and foremost, what versions of software? This is very significant because Linux in the last couple of years has grown in leaps and bounds with how good it has become. Go back a few years back, things were not quite as good. And the problem with Debian is it is often, uh, Debian is often has much older packages based on is it on based on stable or testing and so here our Kden live version is 16.12.2 and the current working version is 17 and mind you this distribution just came out today so we're talking about an old version now this version of Kden live they should have had the bugs worked out the version 5 was extremely buggy and barely ever worked and most people hated Kden live and thought Kden live sucked and video editing on Linux sucked because the previous version to Kden live didn't work right constantly crash this version I think is gets into the version that does start to work right and so we are in a case where Already, we have older software that's getting closer to things that don't work. Um, now, Kden Live is what I do use for 
for my uh, uh, for my production uh, for videos. But audiobooks, I do audiobooks and I also do podcasts, which I use Audacity. Now, we have a big problem with Audacity, as you notice we are version 2.1.2. Well, all of the tools that you need for Audacity to do your audiobook production right require a minimum of 2.1.3, which means that the way this ships out of the box to this day, I cannot plug this system in my computer and actually do audiobooks um, and podcasts in a way that uh, that will be accepted by the systems. So there's actually a suite of plugins. The problem is is that Audacity, uh, while Audacity has a normalized function, what they don't have is they don't have an RMS normalized function, which you have to use because you have to have an RMS value uh, for distributing an audiobook to any of the retailers. You have to have a um, an RMS value between a certain range and you can't make that work without that RMS normalized, at least not without spending an excessive amount of time on it. The other thing that you need is the limiter, which is already here. And you also need a profile under the equalization that has been added in, in recent times. You also need under your analyze, you need the ACX checker. And none of those things will work without upgrading the version of Audacity. So this distribution dedicated to AV, uh, AV production just came out today, has old versions of software that you can't actually use to do a lot of good production. Uh, because the AV production in the last recent years has really been growing by leaps and bounds. And so while this is a neat system, I might want to play around with it a little bit. It looks like a neat place to learn about some of these, uh, these other uh, applications that I would love to learn how to use. Um, it is an interesting thing. I'm not sure I can really recommend AV Linux simply because the installation is a royal pain. Um, they didn't have consistency, literally having a separate password um, a separate password for the live key and the installation, um, having all of the documentation hard to find and buried. Uh, you can get it working. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you have to manually set everything up and the installation is completely backwards for most other Linux distros. Add to that the fact that we are using old packages and some of the tools that you need for modern day production of these areas. Uh, they're not going to work on this out of the box. And so you could dive into this, get into the system, think that everything is going to go well and find yourself in a lot of deep disappointment simply because the packages are still emerging from that time that Linux packages were, uh, were not as good. Um, so I want to experiment with a little bit. I really think maybe in the next version or two, uh, particularly if they clean up that installation, the next version or two, this might be really good. But as for now, um, if you need an AV based one, I would probably still recommend that you look to Ubuntu Studio or just look to the specific applications you need. Start with a bare boned um, anything that works and just add these applications. They're all applications that are available in most repositories anyway. These are just builds that give us something out of the box. So that's kind of my quick initial take on AV Linux. Um, let me know if you guys want to see how you install this, if that would be helpful for you. I will be glad to do another video just walking you through the installation. Uh, let me know if that would be uh, helpful for you um, so you can poke around in it yourself. Uh, you can help support the channel. Once again, to have a look at the Audible uh, links in the description down below. You can also uh, have a look at the other links in the description or the ones up above me and have a look at the social media accounts as well. So thanks for coming along and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.